Hey guys, it's Clutch here, and we're going to start this video off with a chest opening for my silver chest cycle. With the giant chest, we got some gold, some bombers, goblins, a little bit of heal spell. All right, let's move on to that magical chest. From the magical, we have more gold, we got some royal giant, we got a goblin gang, more elixir collector, we need that bomber, and we got some tombstone in there. We got some Executioner, that's always helpful, and some Dark Prince. Not bad, not bad. We need the Collector and the Executioner, since I have been trying the Golem Beatdown. We got some Guards, Baby Dragon, Clone, and Skarmie. Not too bad, we needed that Baby Dragon as well. For the Legendary Chest, we got the Bandit, which will put it at level 2. One of the few cards we do not actually use currently. All right, so for this first one, this is gonna be the live battle. We'll get into the recorded one that I have later. The other one was, uh, it was a real buzzer beater, real nail biter. So getting off into this battle here, this guy plays a Hog Rider Executioner deck, and he's gonna immediately start with the Ice Spirit Hog Rider, which will use the Log and the Electro Wizard to take care of. However, we're not gonna put anything on its tower, no miner down there because we're gonna just try and save Elixir because we know that most of these hog rider players use uh, some type of hog cycle. So you gotta keep your Elixir up while you can and kind of wait for double Elixir before you actually start making your push at the end. And that's where you get all your actual damages at the end usually. Here he's gonna miss one of my fire spirits with the log. So it will do some damage and take out his skellies while my ice wizard gets killed. We're not too worried about that Executioner. We're gonna get our Tornado and our Executioner down, and then we're gonna put the Ice Wizard in there to slow everything down a little bit. Fortunately, he will use the Lightning and weaken my Executioner and take out my Furnace. So now that we've stopped his troops, we're just gonna go ahead and slowly build up our defense again, getting the Furnace in there, building up our Elixir, and waiting for that Hog Rider push cycle to come in. So right now, he's probably just building up his elixir. Not much is going on. We're not worried about it. We're still building up our elixir, waiting for that clock to kind of tick out a little bit so we could start doing damage on his tower. We are gonna go ahead and put the miner in poison and let the fire spirits get in there so we can kind of just take out that uh, executioner so we don't have to worry about it when the hog rider comes on down. His knight will come in as a shield for his hog rider and his fire spirit. Fortunately, it's gonna take a little bit to get the tornado going, so he's gonna get a couple swings in there, but we're, we still have that lead, so we're not worried at all. We're gonna go ahead and get that furnace down once our executioner is far enough back, and we will use that log to slowly take out his other troops as well. He is gonna keep on using that lightning on me, however, we have our Ice Wiz and our Electro Wizard and the Tornado to stop him from being able to make another push. And now that we have a uh, double Elixir and everything going on, we're able to get our troops in there a lot quicker. And that Poison spell does work of those skeletons. And between the Miner and the Ice Wizard on the tower, we're getting some good damage here along with that Poison spell. He is going to try and switch sides, but we're not worried about it. We got the... Executioner, we got our Ice Wizard in there and our Tornado Spell, just completely stopping his push right here. We do miss with the log, but it's not that big of damage or deal because we're getting damage on the tower. And with us only having 800 health left, we will get that Miner in the back to deal with that pesky uh, Executioner of his while we Tornado his troops to the center and then get the log on the Hog Rider right as it comes to the tower. That way it can't even get a swing at all. We will put the furnace down, however we do it a little too early so he gets a shot off on our furnace, but we're not worried about that. With 500 health left on his tower, all we need to do is get that miner in there with the poison and it should be an easy win for us. He is gonna keep trying to lightning my troops, but with the log and the miner and the poison, we get the good game played very well and it was down to 800 health on my house tower so good for him so this next one is just a replay he uh it was he almost beat me so i wanted to show it on here it was a really good match with both level 13s 
So I figured I would share this replay with you guys. So already right from the bat, just looking at the troops he has uh, available for the beginning of the play, you can see it's not a standard deck. However, at this point, you can see that he is running the uh, Double Prince deck. So we're just gonna go ahead and have to take care of those Barbarians on both sides and deal with that Mini P.E.K.K.A and the Dark Prince and those Barbarians. Luckily we have our Double Wizards, which are able to take out those troops with him getting minimal damage on our tower, so we're not too worried about it right now. It does suck that he is a level 13 King Tower and we don't have a level 11 Furnace, so he's able to one-shot all my troops. However, we're not too worried about it. We're gonna go ahead and do a split push so he has to get at that Prince on the opposite tower to defend it from getting too much. We are able to walk away with a little bit more damage than he got on ours. And at this point, we'll use the log to stop his uh, incoming troops. So as of right now, we have a nice uh, lead. Well, not a nice lead, but we have a little bit of a lead. So we're just gonna go ahead and regain our elixir. And as you can see, he's doing the exact same thing. He's gonna wait till 10, and then he's gonna go ahead and start another push with the Dark Prince and the Mini, mini Pekka. He's gonna accidentally do some preemptive arrows, which end up not helping him at all. And we'll only have to use the Ice Wizard and Furnace to defend our tower. And he only gets a little bit of damage on our tower once again, which was nothing more than the arrows. He is going to ignore my Ice Wizard, so we'll just go ahead and get a little bit of damage on his tower. And as of right now, he barely has the lead, but it's less than 50, so we're not worried about it. We're both sitting at max elixir here, so I'm gonna drop my Executioner, and I'll get my Electro Wizard to stop that Prince's charge. However, he will get a little bit of damage. He'll get one regular swing, but it wasn't a serious swing, so we're not worried about it. We are gonna go ahead and get that Poison on the tower with our Miner in there, and he is going to counter with the Mini P.E.K.K.A. and the Dark Prince. However, we're gonna take that out with our Executioner. At this point, we have regained the lead and we have damage on both towers, so we're feeling pretty confident here. Just gotta keep up the pressure and not allow him to get us distracted with the split pushes. So we will use a defensive furnace here and use those fire spirits to kind of break up that barbarian horde. And we're gonna keep pressing our attack at this point and use our log to get some direct damage. And at this point, we have taken a good lead, however he is making his counter attack. We will put the Electro Wizard down, but his regular Prince is able to completely take it out and he is gonna get some good damage on my tower at this point because I wasn't able to get my Miner up in time. So he's gonna get a full charging Prince hit on my tower. And with that, he is able to take the lead. That was my mistake. However, we are still able to come back from that. Luckily for us, we have enough elixir at this point. There's still 30 seconds left in the game. So as long as we don't do any more goofs like that, we should be good. He is just gonna continuously use those arrows to take out my fire spirits. However, this time we've learned our lesson about the placement of that electro wizard. So we're just gonna keep on doing proper chip damage with our miner with that poison. He unfortunately does completely ignore my miner, and with that, I am able to get the win. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.